Okay, welcome back to CHE205. This is the next lecture on solving differential equations numerically using VBA script. So in this video, I'll be talking about uh, solving the pendulum problem using backward Euler. Uh, and our goal is actually to use the VBA script. So if you remember, we converted the pendulum problem, which is the second order differential equation, to a system. So uh, just to remind you, uh, the pendulum problem was this, and then we converted into, well, after renaming the variables, and converting uh, theta to t and, um, and um, setting the right-hand side equal to 1, uh, we define a new variable z, and then instead of having just the second derivative of y with respect to t, we convert the problem into having two equations, one on y and the other one on z, but both are first order this time, right? It's, this is the first derivative, this is first derivative. We don't have second derivative anymore. The payoff is we have a new variable. So now we are solving a system with two equations. I just put the two equations here. So this is d d d t of y and z. So what, the way we can look at this problem is you read the first line, that will be the first equation, you read the second line, that's going to be the second equation. So which means uh, dy dt is equal to z, right? dy dt is equal to z, and then dz dt is equal to 1 minus 2 cz minus y. And that's what, that's what we have here, dz dt is 1 minus 2 cz minus y. Okay. So I'm going to solve this using backward Euler. If you remember from backward Euler, backward Euler is this at yn plus 1 minus the same thing at yn, right? So this thing at yn, divide by delta t, let's call it dt, okay? So this at yn plus 1 minus the same thing at yn, divide by delta t is equal to right-hand side at n plus 1. So that z becomes zn plus 1, z becomes zn plus 1, and y becomes yn plus 1. So this part is the backward Euler version of the differential equation system. Okay? Now, what are the unknowns? The unknowns are always the n plus 1 variable. So I have to solve for yn plus 1 and zn plus 1. But yn plus 1 also shows up here. zn plus 1 also shows up on the right-hand side. So it's coupled system. I have to solve for yn plus 1 and zn plus 1, assuming that I have two equations and two unknowns. Okay, let's do that. Let's expand this. I'm going to move the n variable to the right-hand side. I get y n plus 1, z n plus 1 from here. These guys go to the, the other side, becomes positive. So it's y n, z n plus. And you have to cross multiply by dt. So plus dt times this, which is right here. Okay. Now, uh, uh, so... There's also z n plus 1 and one y n plus 1 here. So let's bring these guy, these two guys, well, these three, one here, one here, one here. I have to bring these three guys to the left side and, and combine with these two. So let's see how the first equation would look like. Okay, so from the first equation, I have y n plus 1 on this side, and dt z n plus 1 goes to the left, becomes negative, and that's what I have here, 1 times y n plus 1. And then minus dt times zn. So this is like matrix times a vector is equal to another vector. Okay, I just converted this equation to a matrix times a vector equals another vector. Just convert it to a matrix form. Okay, so one more time, yn plus 1 minus dt zn is equal to yn. That's what I have here. yn plus 1 minus dt times zn plus 1 is equal to yn. So that's the first equation here. The second equation, zn plus 1, okay, so this is, let's tell actually from yn plus 1. So we bring this to the left side because it's unknown. So it's going to be dt times yn plus 1, and that's what I have here, dt times yn plus 1, okay, plus zn, so 1 times zn, so that's the plus zn term, or zn plus 1 term, so plus zn plus 1, 
and then in, we bring this to the left side becomes plus dt two c z n plus one, and that's what I have here plus two c dt z n. If you remember from matrix vector multiplication, you have to multiply this row by that vector. So it's dt times this plus this times that is equal to the right hand side, and that's exactly this the second equation here. Okay, the right hand side would be zn from here and dt times 1. So you see a zn and dt times 1 is dt. Okay, so I converted my uh, my system to a matrix form. Then this is the unknown. I got a times x equal b. Remember that? No, we want to solve for x. So it's inverse of a times b. Okay, and if you do that, then you solve for zn plus 1, y plus 1, which is what I have here. I actually did that. I inverted this matrix and multiplied by the b. You get the z. Uh, you get the unknown y n plus one z n plus one. Okay. So if this is a bit confusing, you can call y n plus one z n plus one as y one y two. This is maybe easier to understand when you write the VBA script. So I write rewrite this as y n, rewrite this as y two. This guy as y one y old one, and this one is y old two. Okay, this whole thing is called y. This is at time. This is at time n. This is at time n plus one. So for n plus one variable, I just call it one and two. So this is the first element. That's the second element of y. And on the right side, we have y old one, y old two. You can think of it this way as well. So it's the same way. Anyways, uh, so if you solve this system, you find your y n plus one and z n plus one, which are here. Let's implement this into the switch, into the VBA script. Okay, so here's the VBA script for the second order differential equation we had before. All I'm changing is let me move this over, make it smaller. Okay, all I'm changing is the backward Euler version of it. So before was forward Euler. So this is the forward Euler we got exactly from the textbook now i just recall or rename this function and call another function called backward euler that's the only change i do to the code and all i had to uh, all i have to do is just rewrite this function which calculates the backward euler so the backward euler only needs the um the new variable y and as soon as i have the new variable y i can print them on the spreadsheet so let's see how we can calculate y so here is the backward euler it's actually pretty simple it's just like two lines of the code okay uh, i'm sorry this is forward euler so backward euler is right here a few more lines okay this is the backward euler version how do we do this first we get the y and we assign these y to y old because this is current y i'm going to calculate the next y right so i'm going to keep the current y as y old and then based on y old i'm going to calculate the new y so let me move it over here I have the pdf up maybe here so you can see what's going on so compare these two equations with these two equations okay so first y2 is going to be the second element of my y which means z and again one and two variable means the new the new variable and old one means old variables so zn plus one is nothing but y2 and zn plus one is right here Oops. so i'm going to compare this to zn plus one with my y2 look at that h is dt right so it's dt that's h minus h times y n minus h times and this guy is y old right which element of y old the first element so it's y old one and then plus z n which is going to be y old two because z n is the second element of the y old that's the that's the numerator and denominator is one plus two alpha h one point one plus two alpha h and then plus h squared so i implemented this exactly right here and for y n plus one because this is the first element of y it's going to be y1 okay this guy is y y old one and that's what I, what I have here and then h which is dt 
z n plus 1 is going to be y2, which I calculated right here. So this time you have to calculate y2 first and use y2 to calculate y1. It's a bit puzzling, but that's how we calculate it. You know, Zn needs to be calculated first, then yn. Okay, this is it. So now we have the backward dealer version of this. You can easily go ahead and run the code. So let me just reset it and get rid of uh, this piece and go back to the script. Yep. And let's go ahead and reset and run. There you go. Here it is. So I solve using backward Euler and then comparison. Backward Euler is red and is blue. I'm sorry. And forward Euler is red. We had forward Euler from before. The script is on uh, is on Blackboard. That's the basic the script we got from the book. I just copy the result over here in these two columns to to be able to basically to be able to compare. And they're really close. So which means we're doing fine. Okay, let me save this and go to the next problem. Let me save this. Okay, so the next problem I'm going to look at is solving the same problem, the same second order differential equations, the pendulum problem, this time using RK2. So here's the RK2 derivation. Remember again, we have two, a set of two equations. This is y, this is derivative of y. We just rename it as, let's say, u and z, or y and z, whichever you want. That's fine. And this is the right-hand side, okay? So this is nothing new. This is the two equations I have here, z and 1 minus 2 cc z minus y. So here's z, 1 minus 2 cc z minus y. So z is this guy, and y, um, I think this should be y instead of u, okay? Right, so for RK1, so for RK2, we have to calculate K1 and K2. And these are equations, these equations taken from the book. For K1, you have F times, well, F at YN, and for K2, we have F at YN plus K1. And then we get YN plus 1 as an average of the K1 and K2. So what is K1? K1 is, you have to evaluate this at YN. So instead of Z, you're going to get the second element of Y, because Z is the second element of Y. And then everywhere you have z, you can, you can put y2, and everywhere you have y, you can put y1, because that's the first element of y. So that's k1, and then k2 is the right-hand side of f. You need to replace all the y's but by y plus k. So the zn is going to be y2 again, and zn again y2, and yn is going to be y1. But instead of this, well, for, for y2 and y1, we're going to have the old y plus k1. So we get this sum first, we assign it to y, then we use this y into these three elements. Okay, so let's look at the script. The script is going to be something like this. Again, this is pretty much like the forward Euler version. i just show you what part of it needs to be changed. So this is the forward Euler, we're going to block it out and come into that, and then we call this RK2 functions twice, one to calculate K1 and one to calculate K2. And every time we calculate, we call it, the first time we call it, let's say we get Y, and the second time we call it, we call it W. When we call it Y, then we add, we add Y to K1 to get W, and then we use this W to calculate K2. And once we calculate K2 with this with this, we're going to get f, and then f is going, well, k2 is going to be h times f, and then we average over k1 and k2. So let's look at just the inside of rk2. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty simple. It's like two lines, and that's the equation I have here. Uh, here. So if I shrink this a little bit, like so, and put the script up, over here and this guy over here you can compare the two equations I have here so w2 is z2 and w1 sorry the right hand side right hand side is going to be this right w2 and 1 minus 2 because z minus y is 1 minus 2 alpha w2 and w1 all right thanks for